And good afternoon. Welcome into a Wednesday, December 23rd edition of Market Talk. I'm your host, Jesse Allen. Great to be here with you as always. MarketTalkAg.com. Find us. That is our home on the web, MarketTalkAg.com. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. It is all the same at Market Talk Ag. Our great radio affiliates as well, including KWMT in Fort Dodge, Iowa, KASM in Albany, Minnesota as well as uh, some of the great stations in Bethany and Cameron, Missouri. Also our friends at uh, WIBW in Topeka, Kansas. Well, we had another solid day on the markets here as we head towards uh, the Christmas holiday. Let's talk about it. Bringing our friend John Heimberg with Total Farm Marketing by Stuart Peterson. John, good to see you and uh, Merry Christmas, my friend. You too, Jesse. Glad to be here. Uh, so I hope everybody has a great holiday season. Uh, one more day of trade this week, so we'll see how things kind of play out tomorrow on shortened Christmas Eve day. Yeah, shortened Christmas Eve day tomorrow, and I think so far this week, and uh, you know, especially again today, uh, I think Santa's bringing our our producers some presents here on this futures market, John. I mean, uh, another solid day in soybeans, wheat futures as well. A good, a good shot for corn, getting some of that support. I think for beans and wheat. I know. Um, we set a new contract high in corn overnight and closed just below it. Uh, overall, what is your impression in the last few days in this market? Since we talked last Thursday, uh, we've seen some good moves. Yeah, we really have, especially that soybean market really kind of kicking in. Uh, surprised me a little bit. I mean, I'm not surprised given the fundamental picture and the way the money was flowing. But I thought, you know, with the options expiration tomorrow for January options and the, all the open interest around the $12 window, I thought maybe that would hold us a little bit. But obviously uh, the market says uh, no and onward we roll. Uh, so we'll have to see how things kind of play out tomorrow. We did kind of soften up a little bit at the end of the day with the shortened holiday trade today and and you know just the thinner crowd this week but uh but like you said good move in corn today pushed to the 450 barrier in the front month contract got december corn next year pushing 425 uh just a penny short of that on the highs today and then you still got the soybean market that uh just does not want to seem to calm down picking up another 10 cents uh today so it's been a pretty interesting time frame here and and now you know as we get through tomorrow and the next week and then we start thinking about january and the report uh, that's coming out on the 12th and what happens there. Uh, this market could be pretty interesting for the next few weeks. I think a lot of volatility out there is, is what we're seeing. I mean, so far it's been it's been all good. We've been moving this market higher for the most part, but a lot of volatility. It's almost feeling like a day trader's market at times here, John. Just, uh, uh, I mean, volatility sometimes, you know, not necessarily a good thing, but at least in this case, we haven't seen a big move lower, it's all been to the high side. Yeah, and that statement you said about the day traders stepping in, that's maybe what some of this is here too, is we're seeing some more investor money or some of that speculative money move into the markets in general. Obviously, they're looking at the technical patterns, the trends, and looking for a place to flow money to. And especially that soybean market, uh, market day traders like it. And when you're talking to you know, March beans, 25 cent range today, January beans, 26 cent trading range today. You know, that gives a lot of opportunities for traders within the day to make moves. You know, again, volatility is one of those things you love it and you hate it at the same time. You love it from the standpoint of it gets a market move and it provides good opportunity. But then obviously, you know, it also makes things a little more tense in terms of making decisions because, uh, if you don't pull a trigger or you make, make a decision, next thing you know, this thing moves 20 cents one way or another against you. Uh, so that's uh, you know part of what we're going to be dealing with. I don't think it's going anywhere with the weaker dollar where it is, with the, mm -hmm. the tighter, tightening supplies of what we're seeing here in terms of fundamentals. This market's going to keep this volatility well into next year, and then we can even start talking about weather. Yeah, and weather, South American weather is a big storyline we're watching right now. Argentina's getting dry. We have the strikes going on down there as well. Uh, and that all seems to be playing into this market right now. And you mentioned that January report. And I think it's going to be crucial for us, John, to get those uh, those numbers in on that report so we can start figuring out what this acreage battle is going to look like here in the U.S. next spring. I agree with you. And I think that acreage battle is actually starting to come together already. You can just look at the last couple of days, December corn versus November beans. 
you know, there's a lot of bull spreading going on in these markets, at least in the bean market, you know, March up 10, November beans down three, you know, that's that buying in those front months. But it feels like last couple of days we've been seeing wheat being bought, we've seen corn get bought and they've been selling the November bean contract. So maybe that's already starting to come into place as they're looking at the ratio and trying to balance that out a little bit. You know, December corn at 423, I've been saying for a couple of weeks now, I think it's undervalued and I still do. Uh, so maybe we're seeing some money flow there and, and, and selling that November bean contract against it. So it's going to be interesting to see how some of the numbers kind of shake out when we see commitment of traders and things like that. But that's almost what it feels like this week. You know, typically, even if we got a stronger bean market, we're getting a little bit of a bid in those back contracts. But it's been hard the last couple of week, last couple of trading sessions here to get some money flowing out there. Mm hmm. I got a couple questions in uh, here this morning, John. I got one from a producer, a friend of mine in uh, southwest Minnesota, and he's sitting on some soybeans right now. And I know there's not many folks that are sitting on beans right now in the bin, but you know he's got about a bin full of beans there that he's uh, he's really starting to wonder whether he should move. It's kind of his his risk, you know, his 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 fun beans in a way. He's, he's kind of playing with these a little bit, but looking at where this market uh, is at today, looking at that. January, March, May contract right now on the future side. You know, if he's thinking of selling right now, or at least what are some options that he might have to do with that bin full of beans right now? You know, that's a very difficult question. I've answered that for a few people or had to respond to that same question. It's just like, you know, hey, I got good value. Do I need to move things? And, you know, I'm never going to say, uh, you know, don't make a cash sale that's profitable because in the long run, profitability is still the key. But, you know, if you got some wild card bushels, one way to handle it, run a trailing stop underneath the market in your mind. You know, I'm looking at January beans, 1258 today. You know, if we close back under 1240, pull the trigger, move them because maybe the market's rolling over. You know, right now the market feels like it wants to go higher and, and then we can have some patience, I guess, if you want to be concerned. Look at short term put plays. Uh, I would definitely have something in place if we continue to rally this into that January report. Make sure you got a floor underneath those beans. We're going to be looking at South American harvest right around the corner. At the same time, the market may price in numbers that get achieved. So then we get that bearish sell off reaction that like we see at times. So it's going to be that's an interesting question in terms of how you handle it. You know, pick a target, stay disciplined to it. If you want to stay in the market. You know, look at some of those call strategies that are out there longer term and, you know, get maybe get out into the summer months. So you get a look at summer weather, which is where you would have held those beans to anyway. Uh, but like I said, if you want to stay in it now, keep a floor underneath of it here. Puts are actually pretty doggone inexpensive. You're still going to be out of the money a little bit, but at least you can put a floor underneath in case we get a black swan event or just all of a sudden get this corrective pullback that we kind of been waiting for mm -hmm. uh, here in this bean market overall. Yeah. And uh, on the corn side of things, you know, we mentioned that new contract high. We closed just below it today. But, you know, and I know you've alluded to this corn market, but I, I guess I'll, I'll kind of take that question, flip it over to corn. If I'm a producer that's got corn sitting in the bin right now, thinking about making some sales, you know, this corn market, it's moving higher, but it's moving a lot slower than this bean market. Uh, but I would think there's a lot of good opportunity for profitability right now with where these prices are at. Very much so. A lot of guys have been pulling the trigger on some of the old bushels that they still are holding. You know, they're getting $4 plus cash sales, depending on what your basis is, where you're located in some regions. You know, we are still owning those. Now you got to ask yourself the question, what's my risk tolerance? You know, mm -hmm. buying a call at 450 in July, you know, what's going to be the upside potential? on that, if you're gonna put 25 cents into it, that means we need to get ourselves all the way to 475 realistically for that call to work. You know, it might be a window, if you wanna stay in the market short term, you're gonna put 20, 30 cents into a call, maybe you own the board and put that 20, 30 cents in as your risk. And if the market drops below a certain point, you got a stop order kicking you out. You know, they're at least your penny for penny in the higher side, but it comes down to your risk tolerance and make sure you understand what you're doing in that regard. Again, I'm still targeting about another 15, 20 cents higher on corn. We're probably about that 465 window, I think, is what we can push to. This 450 area, I think we hit a lot of selling today, especially given the time of the year and just that psychological number. That's probably why we peeled back a little bit off those highs today. Uh, but again, you know, there's opportunities out there. Don't be afraid to make those sales. 
but then make sure you have that conversation on how you can stay in the market a little bit longer. And again, we want to see that summer weather. You know, we keep talking about yeah. weather over in South America. We keep looking at that drought monitor map. We're going to get a very tight supply picture, or at least a, a tightened supply picture in that January report. If we see any inkling that we could have some weather issues here, you're going to see that premium come flying into this market out of just panic. And uh, so you want to make sure you're keeping something out there, look in the August, September, you know, windows to at least keep some upside available to you if you move corn now. On the wheat side of the equation, I know March Chicago wheat led uh, the percentage gains uh, among the grain sector today. And, uh, you know, CME reported deliverable stocks of soft red uh, wheat 6% lower than last year's tight supplies. I know the dollar news uh, playing into this wheat market right now and this little bit of rally we're seeing here. Um, and anything else in this wheat market for our uh, wheat producers out there that need to be watching right now? You know, again, continue to watch what's going on in the Southern Plains in terms of weather. Where's the winter wheat acreage? And, and again, this is another one of those markets. Look at spring wheat versus beans. Uh, again, we're talking about selling that new crop bean versus a, a long wheat position, like a long corn position. It's going to be a heck of an acre battle in the northern tier. You know, talking to those North Dakota producers already uh, that I work with, they're making some decisions. Do I put wheat in the ground? Do I put beans in the ground? And uh, wheat acres are like slightly limited here already in the United States. So if we see something that can pressure that, that's going to probably keep some premium in that market. You know, so that's something that we're looking at overall, you know, just watching the global export situation. I mean, there's still pretty good supply of wheat globally. We've got some obvious issues in Russia. Some of, the, some of their sales may be getting limited in terms of getting some shipment. So that's bringing some buying support in. And then again, we're just looking at a technical picture we thought could break out. Now we're possibly challenging that March or the May to the 640 window. We'll see if that comes together next week. And we'll see where this thing really wants to go. If it takes out that barrier, we've got more room to run. And you're going to see that speculative money come in. And realistically, of the three grains right now, the one that's got the smallest amount of long positions in it is the wheat market. So if they want to push it, they can get back in and go ahead and push that market higher. John, let's flip over to livestock. I think uh, some feedlots, uh, Christmas wishes came true a little bit here. Uh, for producers, you know, this cash cattle market jumped $2 higher in the south. You know, the north uh, side of things still uh, trying to figure out this market here on a holiday shortened week. And, you know, we, we finally we're talking blizzard in the northern plains and uh, working through into Iowa, Minnesota today. Um, wondering if maybe some of that snowstorm had an effect on some of that northern cattle trade today. I know futures wise we were decent. Uh, what did you see in this cattle market today? Yeah, cattle market, nice push today. First off, let's talk technicals. The February contract kind of sold off going into that cold storage report we got yesterday afternoon, which was fairly much in line with expectations. And, you know, given the size of the cattle that we've been slaughtering, the numbers we've been slaughtering, we're seeing a little bit of backup in that regard. But it wasn't anything over and what I would classify as overburdensome, you know, given the fact that the domestic demand is still pretty good. So we back tested the February cattle down to the 100 day moving average. Nice close higher today. Feels like we're ready to break this thing out. We'll see if we can get some money flow into doing that. The weather across the Northern Plains probably did aid the market a little bit too, but today's strength probably came from that cash trade. We saw the Fed cattle exchange trade a couple bucks higher today this morning, uh, about at uh, the 110 level. You know, then that trade followed through in the Southern tiers. And then from talking producers in Iowa, as well as some of the Northern bids, they, they kept firming as the afternoon went. In fact, they did hear a little bit of 110 Iowa trade today. Uh, and so that was encouraging to see, considering I was kind of maybe been dealing with some of the heavier weight cattle that's out there. So the cash market, uh, you know, the Packers are very short bought this week. Most of these cattle are getting delivered for next week. So the activity should be pretty good next week as well. So that might be that, that little bit of momentum we need to maybe get this market to move higher. If we can get that February cattle back through that high from a couple of days ago, and that'll open this chart up a little bit on the technical side. Again, that money flow thing cannot be denied. When that money wants to own cattle, wants to own beans, you know, it's that window. I think we could see that move in. Uh, so I'm a little bit encouraged by that. And uh, we'll see how tomorrow brings uh, the end of the week to us and what comes up at us on Monday. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what comes at us on Monday and uh, finishing up tomorrow as well. And you know, I'm thinking we might still see a little bit of trade yet uh, here this afternoon, and maybe a little tomorrow. But I got a feeling uh, Packers feedlots—they're going to be—they'll uh, be closing down for Christmas here a little bit early. Let's talk hogs. We saw a nice, strong day in hogs today. Substantial support developed as we headed into the afternoon close. I know uh, just got the quarterly hogs and pigs report out here this afternoon, and I'm just looking at this myself. Um, 
all hogs and pigs on December 1st, 77.5 million head, down 1% from December last year and down 1% from September of this year. Um, I don't know how much you've looked at that. I know it just came out, John, but uh, overall in this hog market, a pretty decent day before we got that quarterly hogs and pigs report. Yeah, it was one of those ones where the market was maybe anticipating a number that was going to be a little bit smaller than last year. And so we bid into that report a little bit yesterday and then finishing it up today before the numbers came out after the close. And realistically, the numbers are very much in line with expectations overall. So it was encouraging to see that, uh, you know, animal kept for breeding. That number is actually a little bit less than what the market was anticipating. So that could be a little bit friendly marketed 99 percent right in line. So. So what we're looking at here is a market that could get a little bit of a boost off that initial part of that report. If, if we feel like we've got some things maybe tightening up in the supply picture, obviously putting $4 plus corn into those animals is going to tighten that supply up a little bit in terms of the expansion. Biggest thing, again, I was taking a look at today, though, when that report came out, where were the weight classes? You know, 180 pound pigs, which are the ones are kind of processing right now. We're about 1% over last year. I was actually a little bit underneath the market uh, expectations. The 120 to 179 group that was basically in line with last year. So that could keep a little bit of a lid on the price action that we see here in the short term as we got real strong slaughter numbers uh, working through this window. Uh, but again, it still looked a little bit thinner than, than what we anticipated. Now, some of the things that could come into play a little bit more in the terms of the 50 pounders, 120 pounders, you know, that could carry into that April, April window. So maybe that keeps a little bit of a lid on the rally or prices out there. So right now we've got a better picture where the numbers are. Now we shift back to the fundamentals, which have been really struggling going into the end of the year here. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see how the market handles tomorrow because the, the, the pigs report is basically neutral. But I'm looking at carcasses down significantly this week. I'm looking at cash index, cash trades struggling this week. Again, a lot of that's tied to the holiday. Uh, so we'll see if that puts some selling pressure back into the market tomorrow. Yeah, and I think whether I'm a hog producer or cattle producer here as we near the end of the year, I think it's going to come down to, you know, we've seen a lot of range bound activity lately in both complexes, you know, for the last few months for that matter. And, you know, with tax season upon us, it if they're thinking they got to make a sale before the calendar flips to 2021, it's not to say there's not profitability out there. It's just going to de you know, depend on your operation. And again, just keep an eye on those targets. And we really yeah. didn't touch on a little bit the deferred cattle and, the, and those placement numbers that came out on that cattle on feed report. Uh, again, those were very friendly. And we touched on that a little bit last week. And I really like what we're seeing in these long-term cattle markets. Uh, just looking at those cow numbers, it looks like the numbers are down going into next year. Now, if we can get the demand figured out, uh, I think there's a lot of opportunity going to be ahead for producers to really put some good floors in this cattle market. You know, again, looking at summer hogs, we start getting to the mid 80s. That's going to be an area we want to be starting to get active, if not even here at these low 80s, given the supply that's out there and the, you know, the potential issues that we could see from China getting back on board in terms of their hog operations. So yeah. look for that value, uh, find a way to protect that value, but still find a way to keep the upside open because we could have a year that could be pretty impressive overall in the commodity sector. When we start talking about dollar index, where things are there compared to the rest of the commodity space, it just feels like we could have 2021 be a, a, a real good up cycle in the commodity markets. Yeah, and that's something we hope for and we'll be watching that for sure. John, uh, real quick, any other final thoughts for us today? You know, again, just again, stay disciplined at targets. I keep talking about that on a weekly level. Have those conversations, you know, with your with advisor or your elevator or whoever you're working with in terms of, you know, what they're seeing, what they're looking at. But then find a way to keep some upside potential in this market going into 2021. You know, I briefly touched on the dollar at the end. If you put a relationship between commodities and the dollar index, it's a total inverse relationship as a dollar lose value commodities go up we're at a point where the dollar's at a bit of a crossroads if it breaks through this floor that it's building right now we could be seeing dollar values that go back to where we were in 13 and 14 and if you look at where bean prices were in that window you know there's still a lot of upside potential there overall yeah john if producers are looking for a little help with their marketing maybe they're heading into next year and they, they want to switch things up a little bit and get some advice from you and the folks at Total Farm Marketing by Stuart Peterson. How can they do that? Sure, Jesse. Again, as always, love to chat with them anytime. Feel free to call the office at 800 
334-9779. Uh, reach out to me with an email at John H at totalfarmmarketing.com. John, appreciate the time as always, my friend, and I will wish you a Merry Christmas and uh, we'll talk again soon. Thanks so much. Thanks, Jesse. Merry Christmas to you and all your listeners. Uh, stay safe and uh, we'll look, talk, look forward to talking with you soon. John Heinberg with Total Farm Marketing by Stuart Peterson, our guest today here on Market Talk. We will not have a program tomorrow uh, with the shortened holiday trade on Christmas Eve. Uh, we'll be back next Monday with a new program of Market Talk. Find us online, markettalkag.com. I'm your host, Jesse Allen, wishing you and yours a Merry Christmas. Have a great afternoon.